is Joy News Prime. Tonight on Joy News Prime, Electoral Commission sets filing fees for presidential aspirants for the 2016 election at 50,000 cities, five times the 2012 fee, causing one of the political party representatives at the IPAC meeting to walk out in protest at the sharp meetings. We'll bring you the other details from the meeting. Vice Presidential Candidate of the New Patriotic Party, Dr. Mama Dubaumia, pledges the New Patriotic Party will issue national IDs to all Ghanaians in the first year of its administration should Ghanaians give it the nod in the 2016 election. He's been addressing a lecture here in Accra. President Mahama, who is campaigning in the central region, is urging the youth of Bremang Sikuma to get registered to take up one of 600,000 job openings to be made available by the Youth Employment Module. We bring you the details of the President's campaign in that region. And in business, government finally raises some $750 million through the little bond issue, this time with a coupon rate of 9.25%. My name is Israel and Joy News Prime is also available across Europe on ABN Television and DSTV and GoTV. Please stay tuned. Right, we have a lot coming your way as far as politics is concerned in this bulletin. A new patriotic party has promised to abolish some taxes to revitalize the Ghanaian economy. Speaking at the annual general meeting of the Ghana Employers Association, the party's flag bearer, Nanadru Dankwe Kufado, said the NDC's government's failure to control inflation coupled with the introduction of a raft of taxes has worsened the economic situation. His claim was, however, countered by Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, Harun Idrisu, who was also at the event. Joining us is Joseph Akable has more in this report. The theme for this year's meeting was promoting sustainable economic development in Ghana, viable policy options. For the association, it was an opportunity for the political parties to address members on how they plan to manage the economy. member of the MPP, Nanaro Dan Kwakufuado, said the NPP's plan to scrap some taxes will lead to a reduction in cost of production, a move he says is critical in helping build a resilient economy. Removing import duties on raw materials and machinery for production within the context of the ECOWAS Common External Tariff Protocol, CET. Eliminating the special import levy. Abolishing the 17.5% VAT on imported medicines not produced in Ghana. Abolishing the 17.5% VAT on financial services. Abolishing the 17.5% VAT on real estate sales. Abolishing the 17.5% VAT on domestic airline tickets. Reducing VAT for micro and small enterprises from the current 17.5% to the 3% flat rate VAT introduced by the NPP. Reducing corporate income tax rate from 25% to 20 percent. In a sharp rebuttal, Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, Haruna Idrisu, said government was handling the economy quite well and that the taxes the MPP flag bearer was berating government over are actually aimed at saving some state institutions from collapse. I'm challenging industry to do a perusa 
of many of the tax regimes in Ghana and accept a fact that many of them do have sunset clauses, which sunset clauses provide for their necessary review depending upon the extent to which it has made a country. The VRA and ECG and some financial institutions in Ghana today are in some distress. Distress because of accumulated debt. Call them the legacy debt, accumulated over a period of time, probably in a decade, including poor. If you don't take the necessary firm decisions which President Mahama took, it may lead even to redundancy or many of those institutions collapsing on your head, whether it was ECG or the VRA. So government necessarily had to introduce the energy sector levy. PPP flag bearer Dr. Papa Kwesindum said education was crucial to building a resilient economy and said his government will make education compulsory up to senior high school level to ensure that a needed human resource is available for production. One of my favorite topics, compulsory education. Compulsory education. Many of you, you've traveled, many of you, you lived in other countries. So there's compulsory education in the UK, just as it exists in the US and in many other countries. So why don't we have compulsory education in Ghana so that it is necessary for an, an individual, a child, to stay in school until they are pick the age, until they are age 18, in my opinion. Joseph Akabli, Join News, Accra. Well, President John Mahama has called on unemployed youth to register with the youth employment model to help reduce the level of unemployment in the country. President Mahama, who is currently in the central region as part of the campaign tour, charged to you to take or to register and take advantage of the 600,000 additional jobs that will be created before the end of the year. The youth employment model, according to President Mahama, will create additional 400,000 jobs between 2016 and 2021. <laughs> Right, our Central Regional Correspondent Richard Kojonyako joins me over the telephone with more on the President's campaign in the Central Region. Good evening to you, uh, Richard. So, tell us a bit more about this promise that President Mahama made to the people of uh, Brahmaneskuma. Well, um, Israel, unemployment uh, has become one of the critical issues the President has been addressing. You remember yesterday when he addressed the senior members and the students of the University of Cape Coast, he was telling them that uh, when they, uh, they enter into the tertiary sector, they should look at uh, courses that will, uh, that will be employable. I mean, courses that when they finish, they will get jobs to do. But today at the on uh, the fourth day of his tour, he has been urging the youth to take advantage of the youth employment module. According to him, uh, currently there are 40,000 uh, people that are on the module and they need additional 60,000 to make up for the 100,000 they are looking for. And so he wants uh, the youth employment coordinators to register a lot of the people as many as possible to reach uh, that uh, threshold. And he also said that next year, January to 2021, the youth employment module will uh, employ about 400,000 youth. And so he said that that is the way of addressing uh, the unemployment situation in the, in the country. Apart from uh, the unemployment issues he spoke about, he also told the cocoa farmers where he went to be, they were basically farmers and uh, farming communities that are scattered around, the, around those constituents. And he told them to go to the Ghana Cocoa Board, any of, of the offices, and then obtain seedlings. Uh, free of charge. He also cautioned them that when they go and anyone attempts to uh, get any money from them for the siblings, they should report those such persons. Apart from that one too, uh, he was at the Amrasa where he told the Kinky sellers and the Kinky makers of the Kinky. You know, when we talk about the Amrasa and uh, places that are close to Cape Coast, their main occupation and what they do normally is the making of kinky and also selling of kinky. So when you are traveling along the Mori uh, Junction to the Biwa Junction, you know that there are a lot of uh, people that are scattered around along the uh, shoulders of the road that sell kinky. President said that they should put themselves in groups in order to be able to get some loans from Maslow. 
and he is ordered the matlock officials to go there and then grant or register them so that as soon as possible they can be granted loans to boost their uh, businesses and then to make uh, better their lives as well. And Richard, now one other thing the president has been talking about is the allowance for teacher trainees, which apparently came up at a lecture yesterday. Explain to us exactly what the president had to say about that. Well, it was in response to a question posed on the floor after he finished addressing the gathering. And the questioner was of the opinion that it was really a double standard the president was pursuing because uh, if you look at the teacher training colleges, it's a, a, a tertiary, it has assumed a tertiary status. And if you look at the nursing training college, too, it has also assumed a tertiary status. Now, uh, the person did not understand why the nursing training colleges should continue, um, uh, are still enjoying the allowances. And so it was upon this one that the president said that, well, the people can continue agitating. But now he's sticking to his word, and it is a matter of principle, and his principles will not allow him to go back there. And so if anyone is nursing the idea that uh, the uh, uh, allowances are going to uh, get back to the teacher training colleges, they are joking because uh, he is not going to do that one, and it is for equity purposes. They want a lot of people to get access to the training colleges. What they can, uh, the government would offer them is loans, and these loans are given to uh, the tertiary sector, as he explains, that the universities, the polytechnics, they all access loans. And these loans have been made um, available to these students to access. For the nursing training college, the president said that, well, they are currently on the allowances. And these are not huge allowances as they used to enjoy before. And they are waiting for an act to be tabled and then... When that one is done, they, all, they will also be taken uh, from the allowances and then they will go back uh, to access their student loans. So that is basically what the president has done. And the president said that uh, there is no way that he's going to uh, take back his word of not giving the training, or of giving back, uh, giving the loans, uh, <laughs> the next, uh, teacher training college allowances to them. All right, thank you very much, uh, Richard Kojo Nyako, reporting from the Central Region. Now, from the Central Region, we're back here in Accra, where the Vice Presidential, presidential Candidate of the New Patriotic Party, Dr. Mamadou Baumia, has been addressing a lecture here. He's been assessing the Ghanaian economy and making some suggestions as to how it can be fixed. Let's listen. Let's take a listen to what he has been saying. Chris from $28.5 billion in 2008 to a projected $40 billion in 2016, which is a 40% increase in eight years. But you will see what is interesting about this data is that MPP increased GDP by 459%, NDC increased it by 40%, but when you look at the tenure of President Mahama, between 2012 and 2016, Ghana's GDP has shrunk by 5%. So, this is Mahama as president, and this is the NDC. Mr. Chairman, under the NDC, GDP per capita, that is the income per capita, recorded has recorded a growth of 17 percent in eight years from 1266 dollars to a projected 1481 dollars in 2016. this is with all right so that's the vice presidential candidate of the new patriotic party dr mamadou baumi addressing that lecture there let's go over live now and speak with our corresponding the ns kojo menu he's been sitting through the lecture good evening to you ns can you give us the highlights of what the vice presidential candidate of the new patriotic party has been saying one of the yeah, things i picked up has to do with uh, the pledge to issue national ids to all Ghanaians when the mpp comes into power well, Israel, the, the feedback is uh, very poor. The line is very poor. The quality of the line is not good. But if you're asking about ID cards, uh, which the vice presidential candidate promised that uh, an NDC government will be given, what he says is that uh, the country do not have good data. Uh, so it makes uh, analysis and predictions very difficult in the country, uh, I mean, for Ghana. And so it will be the priority of an NDP government to give out uh, 
ID card, national ID card, and by so doing, it will give us a correct data of what the country is like in terms of population, in terms of uh, all the other aspects that come as far as uh, uh, identification is concerned. Then they can make predictions, they can make good analysis on uh, economic policies and uh, uh, what have you, Israel. All right. I know he's been saying quite a bit. Can you give us a, a brief uh, summary of some of the highlights of what he's been saying? So essentially, uh, Dr. Baumir has been speaking about uh, the economy. And uh, as the theme suggests, whether it's been built on a straw or on a solid foundation, the conclusion of the whole uh, lecture was that this economy is not strong. He referred to uh, the president and uh, his, his team are saying that they, they, they are building a strong economy and they've been doing so over the past eight years. He doesn't think that the, the NDC should be given another opportunity to continue with what uh, they, they say is uh, uh, the building of a strong foundation for the country. As far as they are concerned, corruption is on the increase, the economy is bad, uh, uh, the, the, uh, our taxes, there are more taxes that are being taxed. Uh, uh, industries and private sector. We talked about the predictions he made in the past as far as elections is delivered and uh, how he was qualified for those comments, including the fact that he predicted Ghana was going to go to the IMF very soon if we proceeded on the trajectory that we were going and how he's been vindicated by uh, the actions of the NDC government. He also touched on GDP and how our GDP growth rate has declined uh, as compared to the resources that have been available to this uh, government over the past eight years. He thinks that, uh, as the president said, so much is given, much is expected. They have done very little with the, the enormous resources that they have had at their disposal as compared to what the NPP did in, the, uh, in 2000 and 2008. All right. And so basically for him, uh, he outlined a few things that the NPP would be doing that they will be tackling employment, uh, they, they would also tackle corruption, and uh, make sure that they put in place the right structures for growth in the country. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Ernest Kojomenu, bringing us uh, what, but, uh, the vice presidential candidate of the New Patriotic Party, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, has been saying he's been addressing a lecture here in Accra. We're taking a break at this point, but we're not done yet. There's a whole lot more coming. We'll be bringing you fallouts of the IPAC meeting that took place today. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Join News Prime. Now, all presidential aspirants seeking to contest the December 2016 elections will have to cough up 50,000 Ghana cities as filing fees to get their names onto the ballot paper for the polls. The fees five times what aspirants for the top job paid in the 2012 election, causing a representative of the Democratic People's Party to storm out of the meeting in protest. Now, 10,000 cities will also be required of parliamentary candidates, 10 times the 2012 figure. The new fees were disclosed at an inter-party advisory committee meeting at which the EC indicated prospective aspirants can begin to pick their nomination forms from next Tuesday, September 13. Now, Favor Nunu has been monitoring information filtering through, uh, filtering from that IPAC meeting and joins, uh, joins me here in the studio. Good evening to you, Favor. Good evening, Israel. All right, so let's start off with this issue of the uh, filing fees, Please. which uh, has gone up to 50,000 cities for presidential aspirants and then from 10,000 cities, uh, that's from 10,000 cities yes. in the last election. And last election. Has the EC been able to explain why such a sharp increase? Well, that's, that's the interest. It's an interesting bit because uh, most of the political parties in the meeting are saying that well when the EC proposed or mentioned that this is the figure 50,000 for the presidentials expectations were that you would offer explanations uh, and wow. how you arrived at that and why it is so but the EC uh, did not offer explanations and trust me it was a meeting that went on for uh, three hours even longer so uh, whatever happened it looks like the EC had taken a very strong entrenched position to say that well we've been able to arrive at this figure and it stays at that 
Well, for the political parties, the small ones, some of them say that they, they protested against the, the figure, asking the EC yeah. to... Yeah, yeah, you, 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 apparently, one of the political rep party representatives, Ward yes, Blue, he uh, stormed out. Ward Blue stormed, stormed out, out, out in anger. He was spewing words here and there. Is, is this that cannot be done in a democracy. We don't agree to this. This is cheating. This is wrong. So we approached him to speak to him, and he was really angry. It was dramatic. Is that the general reaction of all the political parties? Was it just the... Uh, I would say it's, it was for the majority of the people there, majority protested. But the NDC um, said they were cool with it. I spoke to the director of elections, Samuel Ofuswam. He says that they are fine with the figure because they even had their parliamentary and presidential nomination fees um, up to around 10,000. So they were okay with it. But for the majority, which is the small political parties, they kicked against it totally. The CPP, the PPP, the GCPP, every single minor political party there claim that it looks like uh, the NDC and the NPP may be having uh, some tricks to play with them, with the EC, because it looks like they are fine, they will be able to afford it, and the smaller political parties are being edged out of the competition, and they think it's unfair. So it was really uh, confusion all over. They were totally unhappy with the outcomes. You would listen to the CPP, uh, James Bonfrey, and he was frantic about it. He was totally against it we can have a listen to him now See, that's a lot of money and, and in in modern uh, uh ghana right so the best people to ask are the easy but for me it's a lot of money did you question or did you raise objection we did and what was the response of the easy well, it's a decision of the easy that they also don't want proliferation of non-existent parties and individuals who cannot who just come and worry them with their processes. Isn't that a right justification? It's not. It's not. I think there must be a balance of people's ability to participate in our democracy. Mind you, mind you, it is not only political parties that present candidates. You do not need to have financial arm or muscle to contribute your quota to nation building. This is not good enough. Young people who are beginning life and want to contribute by way of offering themselves in terms of leadership, when they have the skill, the talent, the zeal, and the capacity to lead. You're saying that if they don't have the financial muscle, they should go hang? No. Our electoral commission cannot do that. And we made this known to the commission at the meeting. And we want to continue. We'll continue the protest until the right thing is done. What was the response of the EC when you raised well, this concern? They are saying that they are going to consider, and we hope they will consider. But already the matter is out there. And I'm calling on Ghanaians, and there are thousands and millions to stand against these outrageous figures that the Electoral Commission is demanding as filing fees for presidential and parliamentary. But Mr. Bonfrey, one would say that to run an election would be something that's expensive, naturally. Putting up billboards, doing adverts, traveling around country, shouldn't 50,000 be something that a political party should be able to afford? budget for its, the running of its activities is paid by you and I, the taxpayer. So the Electoral Commission is going to run its activity is not going to run its activities with the filing fees that we will pay to them. Exactly. So it is a non-starter to argue that uh, because I'm going to run uh, a, a campaign, that is the more reason. I, I mean, and then buy uh, uh, t-shirts, run posters. I mean, I should also pay additional fees. That's the more reason why the fees should be, you know, encouraged. It should be reduced so that it's, it's reasonable. And don't forget. If you look at the fees we have been paying over the years, compared to what was paid even in 2012 by parliamentary candidates, I was a parliamentary candidate, I paid 1,000 cities. Now you're asking me to pay 10,000. 10, you know what the percentage increase is there? A thousand increase? Is that fair? Is that fair? What are you going to do as, as, as political parties? Well, as I've said, this is the beginning of the protestation. And we'll go to the extent that the law allows us to go. But I understand that the EC creates a caveat saying that a party that gets 12.5% will be refunded it is uh, this not, filing. It is a non-starter. That caveat, it is not a caveat in paying the money. It is something that the EC has done. When you meet a certain um, threshold of votes or percentage, at the end of the day, the Electoral Commission makes a refund at the end of the process. But that's not what we are talking about. We are talking about asking people to pay the money as a qualification to contest. That's what we are saying. It is bad enough. We should not encourage this thing at all because the exercise of our democratic right is part of the process of ensuring that there's peace, sanity, and serenity in our atmosphere. If you discourage people from I mean, uh, contesting, and so their supporters, their fans, 
decide that they are going to you know disengage in the democratic practice what happens it is bad enough and we should all condemn it all right so you had uh, uh, james bonfell of the convention people's party you know he's clearly not very not amused about, about this this decision by the by the ec but there were some other things that came out uh, what one of the things he was indicating was that the ec said what well, they were going to refund uh, part of the monies that the the they pay as the yes. parties pay as far yes. as far so fees. that uh, the the EC has created a caveat that says that for every political party that's able to reach 12.5 uh, percent uh, as in mass votes in that category they will refund a quarter of whatever monies you pay that's part of the filing fees and so it's not your money gone uh, totally Waste. they would still refund it it, it appears to me that this is the EC's way of trying to prune and uh, discourage the minor <laughs> political parties or the non-serious political parties. I, I'd agree with you on that because for most of the political parties who were there, they said that this looks like a conspiracy or a deliberate attempt, attempt. by the EC to take or reduce the number of political parties that will be contesting or that hope to contest in the 2016 general right. elections. Now, what, what other issues came out of the meeting? Uh, is there any word on which company has been selected for the electronic uh, results transmission system? Unfortunately, no company so far has been able to meet the requirements set by the EC so that they went through the tendering processes. The EC has been able to identify all of their capacities and all that, but the EC says they do not meet the requirements and therefore that has been put on hold. Um, the chances are 2016 elections will not see uh, the electronic transmission process at play, but um, other systems like the introduction of uh, monitors where results will be displayed openly for people to be able to understand or see the process and believe that it is indeed transparent and free and fair uh, would happen. But as it stands now, none of them has been selected and so the EC is putting that on hold. All right. Uh, thank you very much. We have on the phone line right now is a deputy spokesperson of the Electoral Commission, Yusuf Ayuba. Good evening to you, Mr. Ayuba. Good evening, Israel. All right. Now, I'd like you to confirm a few things to us uh, about the 50,000 CD filing fee for presidential aspirants, uh, which has gone from 10,000 in the last election. Are you able to explain to us why such an astronomical increase? Thank you very much, um, Israel. Um, it, it's the decision of the commission to, to increase the, the filing fee um, to 50,000 for presidential aspirants and, and 10,000 cities to, um, for parliamentary aspirants. This is a decision of the commission. And it was made known to IPAC today. But right. at, now, at IPAC today, they, they, some of the political parties you know, raised concerns about uh, DC and uh, the, the the commission has um, given them their word that they will look at it and if there's a possibility for them for the commission to review um, DC, the commission will write um, to the political party. But if the commission decides that uh, um, the fee remains, then it will also be made known to the political party. All right, now the political parties are already uh, suggesting that this is a way, the minor political parties are suggesting that this is a way of discouraging them from taking part in the process. Is that the motive behind this decision? The, the, the commission would never, you know, um, try to deprive political parties of, you know, filing their nominations to contest. Especially because, Mr. Election. Yuba, especially because there's, uh, we've, we've been told that the EC says if you're able to amass 12.5% of the votes, you're going, to be, you're going to be getting a refund. Israel, that is, that is true. Uh, but the commission would not come out with a figure because, the, because it wants to you know, prevent smaller parties uh, from contesting. If, if um, you, you form a political party and you can get two representatives you know, across the country to... to uh, to represent you, then it, it presupposes that you, you should be able to, you know, get fifty thousand as nomination fee for presidential as, as a presidential aspirant. Because the fifty thousand uh, cities that you're talking about for presidential aspirants, and you saying that you're going to refund it, means that you don't necessarily need that money. It, it's a decision of the commission that they pay filing fees, and the commission has come out with with this figure. All right. Now, what's the way forward with the electronic results transmission system? Is it, we're told, 
that none of the uh, bids that came through satisfied or met the requirements of the EC. Does it mean that we're scrapping it entirely? Yes. Um, you know, at the, at the, at the, you know, at the last uh, demonstration, we had two vendors who, who were shortlisted to do the demonstration. They came, you know, they did their demonstration, and the technical, you know, team from the Electoral Commission who did the evaluation came, you know, to a conclusion that one, they, they did not, you know, observe um, the, or meet the technical criteria that was set up for them. Most of them, they, they also deviated, you know, from the administrative criteria. There, there, there was also concerns that um, the, the, the tenders will not be able to, you know, perform to the satisfaction of the Electoral Commission, you know, and, and also th there was a concern that, you know, the, 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 the bid that they, they submitted was way, way outside the, 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 the scope of, of the project. So based on this, the technical committee decided that, you know, we will cancel uh, the electronic, you know, transmission of results for this particular election. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yusuf Ayuba. He's a deputy chairperson, deputy spokesperson, sorry, of the uh, Electoral Commission, bringing us up to speed on the fallout of the IPAC meeting, which was held today. And thank you very much, uh, Fever Nunu. He's been bringing us updates on that meeting. He was there all through. We're taking a break on Joy News Prime. When we come back, we'll bring you business news. But there are more stories thereafter. Please stay tuned. Hello, good evening. Welcome to Business. Our government has finally been able to raise some $750 million through the issue of euro bonds on Thursday. The country is expected to pay an interest of 9.25%. This comes a month after the country pulled out of an initial fundraising owing to unfavorable market conditions. George Rafe has more. The Finance Ministry in a statement says the bond which will be paid over a five-year period was oversubscribed by four billion dollars five times more than the 750 million dollars that government was targeting it is ever hoping to pay back the fundraise in three installments that is 250 million dollars in september 2020 september 2021 and the rest in september 2022 Bits came from investors in the United Kingdom, Europe, US, Middle East, and Asia. The finance ministry says it got the 9.25% rate based on the good performance of the previous bond issued. Government had to go back to the international market, raise the money after putting initial plan to raise the funds on hold last month. Government is hoping to use part of the funds raised to pay back the 2007 bond that has reduced to $400 million after a new debt management strategy helped to reduce the amount to be paid after a buyback strategy of $100 million of the 2017 bond using the recent established sinking fund. The finance ministry says it got the 9.25% rate based on the good performance of previous bonds issued. Now, the Joy Ballot Box show makes a stop in Tech Radio on Friday with all in gas, the main issue up for discussion. Tomorrow's show from the Tech Radio Market Circle seeks to put oil and gas on the election agenda, whilst also exploring what key oil and gas issues will influence voting, especially for the electorates in the Western region, where production of Ghana's crude has been ongoing for some years now. Ahead of the big event, Joy News has been finding out from residents of the region how the oil find has impacted their lives. I've not seen any beneficiary of this oil and gas to me. 
Why? The reason being that we've been here for quite a long time before the oil came here. But since oil and a buy and a is too difficult. One standard of living in Takrade now is so high. Oh yes, it is now. Mo jaba ba high. You have worried us with the oil city tag. We cannot even rent rooms. Prices have shut up. Majority of the workers on the oil fields are not from Takradi. They should employ residents of Takradi or those from the western region. Uh, nothing shows that we are in an oil city. When we sell, people do not buy. Do not call here an oil city. If it were an oil city, prices of fuel here will go down. And transportation fares will also go down. Libya and Nigeria have benefited from their oil find. We say we have oil here, but the cost of petrol keeps going up. I have completed school, but I do not have any work to do. I am tired of writing application letters. They say oil city, but business is not flourishing. We are suffering. Now, government has handed over assorted education materials to the Ashanti Regional Education Directorate in Kumasi. The Ashanti Regional Minister at a ceremony to hand over the items. The teachers and students in the region cannot afford to produce poor results following such a gesture and urge them to reciprocate by improving performance. Ohim Interior reports. The Ghana Education Service Regional Office took delivery of the items comprising furniture and stationery. They include chalk, attendance registers and teachers' notebooks, as well as monodesk and bunk bears. Mr. Akon handed the items over to the Director General of the Ghana Education Service, Jacob Ko, who received the items on behalf of the regional directorate. He expects the items to make positive impact on both teachers and students, especially in the region. The government has done a lot by way of infrastructure, right from basic school to the tertiary institutions. But in spite of all that, that provision alone cannot ensure good teaching and learning for what I'm going to do. The government is still providing resources by way of logistics, books, stationery, desks, model desks, and work desks. That alone cannot also ensure quality teaching and learning quality education. Having done all this, the important issue here and the word should be is that, that the this is the schools are about to open. We will prepare to get the schools open. And now this is I looking at this supply system, availability of classrooms, availability of blocks, infrastructure, and availability of this logistics, the common line is that there is no excuse for a teacher, a student, a people to be. Regional Director of Education, Mary Osu said the donation is an indication of government's commitment to improve education. What we are witnessing today is an example of government's commitment. What we are witnessing today is an example of government's commitment to education. The honor therefore rests on us to deliver to the expectation of the nation. It's time for entertainment, and Miss G has joined me. Good evening to you, Miss G. Good evening, Israel. How are you doing? I'm well. I'm okay, well. so it's a holiday on Monday. I'm excited. Okay. Do you have any friends who are Muslims? Yeah. Okay, so can we go visit them? Yeah, we can. Okay. Why not? That's if only they have, you know, meat for us. Well, there will certainly be. I mean, Auntie Muni for sure. I mean, oh. Auntie Muni always comes through for us. Eh. Yeah. Eh, this one is you promising me. 
Auntie no, Monique. No, Allah. Okay, so baby TT has been christened by her daddy, Sarkodie. You know that earlier okay. this year in March, we had the good news that Sarkodie had a baby girl yeah. with his longtime girlfriend, Tracy. And yesterday, the Christian baby TT, she's called Adeline Osu Ado. That's the name of baby TT was a beautiful ceremony in his home. And... Uh, he had some celebrities pass through right. to spend time with him. So, yes, you can see visuals of Sarko Diaz, baby christening or baby christening of uh, Adeline also. Uh, do. So, that's the great news coming from the camp of Sarko Diaz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you can see Tracy in the picture. So, that's baby Titi, baby Titi with her daddy. And uh, Tracy is somewhere in the pictures. And so, that's a good okay, one. Okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. We're happy for them. Yes, 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 so, yes. Like yes, somebody yes. who can rap too, you know. Oh, okay. So we're yeah. about to see the um, <laughs> rapper's daughter, who is also a rapper. Exactly. Wow. Anyway, I hope to find a manifest daughter also rapping someday. Why do you have to bring manifest? No, they get to see themselves, you know. Right <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so let's go on to Lucky Mensa, who today visited the MPP presidential candidate Nana Adu and presented to him a copy of his song Muntu Manana. So you now he started, you know, okay. making his intentions okay. very, very clear. You know, yes, he said that doing business with the NDC was a bad decision he made. Was, okay, doing business with the NDC was a Corolla, Toyota Corolla. Corolla, uh, yes. Maybe this one will bring him the 4x4 four four <laughs> that he really <laughs> wanted at that time. So let's see how this goes. So, well, otherwise, I mean, he could also get it coming through in um, album sales. <laughs> Right, time for sports with Gary Al Smith. Good evening to you, Gary. Good evening, Israel. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Okay, great. What's coming up in sports? Well, um, at the moment, we are looking at one, one this, one that. <laughs> okay, so what's, what, what's being offered as well, far as a uh, sports thing? One out of four, one psychologically ready team. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, you take it away. Yeah. Right. Thank you for joining us. And the Ghana Premier League returns after the break where we had the FA Cup final and the Women's League final. Heart of Folk say they will be psychologically ready for a Busina Dwarfs on Sunday. They've lost the title charge, but they are looking to finish their last three games on a high. Here's your prayer call. Yeah, they were really down. If I won't tell you, uh, if I tell you they, psychologically, they, they, were, they were really, really down. But, uh, you know, I spoke to them. Uh, we had a couple of uh, meetings on the pitch uh, before training and after training, and uh, I sacked them up. And I, I, I've been, I've been uh, educating them, you know, how important three, these three matches is gonna be. At, I, even if you, if you, you don't, if we can win the league, we have to win on on a high note, you know. And uh, they believe, uh, due to some circumstances beyond our control, you know, uh, we should have at least uh, finish the league hands down by now but hey uh, this is part of football and I, and we just we just don't have to give up we're going to go in so psychologically uh, gradually they, they they are there and i believe by by sunday uh, they will be prepared for the game My name is Israel Ayda. I'll be all for the bulletin. You have a uh, good one. This is Joy News Prime.